Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about a project that I had a piece of my new website that I wanted to uh, put together here. And as you can tell, it's a glossary. So a glossary of like web terms in this case, but for you, it could be something else. And I wanna say right off the bat here that the way that this is structured, the way that most of my tutorials are structured is it's not necessarily a recounting step-by-step -step of everything we're doing. I really wanna kind of show you that, but I also wanna tell you some of the pitfalls that I had. And hopefully as you continue your, you know, your trajectory as a web designer, web developer, web admin, whatever you wanna call yourself, that some of the lessons that you learn in here were just are just going to save you time moving forward. So this is a relatively straightforward idea. It's not something that's incredibly innovative, but in the WordPress space, there are many different ways to do things. And sometimes there are better ways. Sometimes there's lighter weight ways, so to speak. And I always like to try to do things as lightweight as possible. Uh, and but as but as customized and as fluid as possible if I want to change something I want to have a lot of that control so if you if you have the idea just right off the top here if you have the idea of creating like a glossary you might think well maybe I'm gonna go to the WordPress repository and just type in glossary plugin or uh, you know search for one online or something that could work uh, definitely might be something but there's a good chance that if you do that, probably in like three, six months, you're gonna to wanna to add something maybe that's not involved in the plugin. You're gonna to have to do some different stuff. I knew what I wanted. I'd seen examples online. I just needed to create it, and I think that I have the tools in my arsenal in order to create something like that. If you're not familiar with dynamic data, custom post types, custom fields, I have a full free series on YouTube right here. I'll put a link in the description, in the cards, wherever. Go check that out because it would be really beneficial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about bricks and jet engine, but you could use any other tools for this most likely. Um, but I just want to kind of walk you through this. So we're going to create a glossary. And right off the bat, I will also say that I did, like, I did run into some pitfalls and I used AI to help me in some of those cases, which we'll talk about here. So let's just dive into it and I will go step by step as to how I ended up creating this. What you're seeing on the screen here is kind of Ultimately, again, there's not a ton of data in here yet, but the, the proof of concept is here. Literally just a page that's like slash glossary. It's not really a page, it's actually an archive. We'll get to that kind of as we go through it and everything. But a screen, so to speak, that somebody would come to and they could see glossary and like terms of it or whatever. This is just simple stuff. But down here is really where the magic happens. Each one of these, as you would expect to see in a glossary or a dictionary, is like a section, so to speak, with the letter that the, that the term um, or, you know, the actual post in this case or whatever, the, the word, the, the, the phrase, whatever starts with, right? And you want all of this to be dynamic in an ideal sense. You could, right? Let me stop for a second. You could just in whatever builder, whatever CMS, anything, just go in here and type a bunch of headings, like literally go in and type out, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever, and then individually come back in and put like individual text elements in here, all manual, no dynamic stuff whatsoever. I would highly recommend against not doing that. That is going to be the bane of your existence forever. And you're not going to want to add more data because it's such a pain in the ass to do all that and manage. And there's just no structure to any of that. So again, watch the dynamic data series if you want to see more deep, like a more uh, fundamental uh, look on that. But we'll, I'll show you how this ultimately happened. But again, at a high level, this is all, that we're, all we're looking to achieve here. Right? We're looking for the, the words like you would see on a dictionary if you went to a dictionary website or back in the day if you would open a dictionary, you would see like, okay, this is the S section and it has you know words in there. This is the T section, you get the idea. And then also you can click to each one and they'll have their own single page where you can learn more about them or da da da, -da whatever, see the actual definitions or whatever. We're not really gonna cover that too much um, because that's, not, that's kind of outside the scope of this glossary situation. Those are just post URLs we could talk about that at a separate time and maybe I'll touch on it slightly, but this is what we're looking for, okay? So at a high level, if you're looking for something like this, this is an approach to take. So where do you begin with something like this? Well, the place that I began is, I think the first thing you always have to do is pretty much, anytime you're dealing with data in a CMS, specifically WordPress, you're gonna have to create a custom post type. Now, there's a lot of other data in this website. Just focus on the things that we're talking about here because this is an active website that I'm currently deving. Might be launched by the time you are watching this, marksemancy.co. But anyway, uh, the first thing that you do in this project, if you're doing this, is you're going to create a custom post type. And again, you could use ACF, the free version. You could use Jet Engine. I'm using Jet Engine for this project, so that's what we're using. If you want to see more information and more tutorials on ACF and all that sort of stuff, leave specific comments down in the comment section, and I will do that for you. But with Jet Engine, you're just going to add a new post type, and you're going to create something like glossary in this case. I will run you through what you would what you would do if you use Jet Engine. Um, also, if you want to use Jet Engine, I'll leave a link below for that. But um, 
in here, post type, what I did was glossary, post type slug, I did glossary. It's a little weird because normally I like to do plural, but glossary is kind of just like a weird, you know, noun type thing. So I just did glossary. It doesn't really matter as long as you know what you're doing. As long as you know what you're putting in there, it really doesn't matter what you label it. Uh, and then labels down here, this is just all the single stuff. So you just, and you could just type an entry here or whatever you wanted. I decided to go with, again, weird words we're dealing with, okay, in this one. But ultimately, um, this is just, this is all labeling semantic stuff here. So it's really not that huge of a deal. Advanced settings, and a lot of these will mimic ACF. So you could probably go through this tutorial and do it with either one, but this is just the Jet Engine UI. If you come in here, you see like everything here is pretty much standard. I don't think I changed anything here other than just like changing the little menu icon and then I turned off the the builder and the featured image because I didn't need any of those I turned off the um, the like the block editor basically I just need title which again is a, a, a setting in, in most uh, custom post type plugins and then down here I've meta fields as acronym because I figured some things like a lifetime deal I might want to write out but it also has like an acronym that is very prevalent and popular so I wanted to have that as a as a meta field not in the name, but as a, uh, a separate field. So I did that as a text field, totally optional, not even really pertinent to exactly what we're talking about here, and then the definition. So whatever you wanna do here, if you're creating a glossary, before we get to any of the actual display stuff on the front end, if you're creating a glossary, just understand that what you're doing. Maybe if you're creating a dictionary, you wanna create like a punctuation, or I'm sorry, not like maybe, like a, like a pronunciation field, potentially, okay? You could throw that in there. Um, you can do other things, it doesn't matter. The one other thing that I will say as we're talking about kind of the setup here and everything like that is I did create also a relation. And the best way I think that I can kind of show you that is if we just go over to, obviously we have some of that data in here. If we go over to an entry, right? So we created our custom post type uh, called glossary and like each one is, is an entry. And then if you wanted to add one after you created it, this is what you would be, this is what you would look like. So this entry is, is user, right? It's just a term that is in the web world, whatever. Uh, and then you can add an acronym if it had an acronym. Again, lifetime deal would be like lifetime deal up here, LTD here, or something like that, just as an example. You can put in the definition, a user is, da da da, whatever. We can look at we can use all that on the front end, it's perfect, whatever. And then down here, the only other thing I want to talk about in setup before we get to like taxonomies and stuff, the ta the, the setup of this is there's a concept called relations. Now, relations are, uh, go watch that video for a full uh, explanation, go watch the, uh, the dynamic data series. But relations are like relating two um, posts to one another, depending on if like maybe you're relating a, you know, in this case, like a, a glossary entry to like another, like a video that you talk about or something, another type of, you know, content per se, or like maybe a page, it could be anything, right? But I wanna show you down here that one thing that I realized is that there are a bunch of like really interesting things in specifically in the glossary web of, of web world that a lot of times things get confused with other things. So one way to do that would be to create a relation between between entries. And all that would mean is like this entry, entry X is similar to entry Y. It's also known as, as I put down here, or I could do another one. It's like often confused with or something, right? And that is, uh, just one way to kind of that that I that I took this glossary thing to the next step. This is not you do not need to do what I'm talking about here, but if you want to, then I'm just going to explain to you very quickly how I did that specifically with Jet Engine. Is that if you come down to Jet Engine here and you go to Relations, then you can say you can create a relation here. So glossary, like also known as, we're, we're relating glossary to glossary, and there's like other there's other ways to do this as well. It's just like the idea would be. Let's, let's do a quick example. If you're familiar with WordPress, let's do a quick example. WordPress.org is often confused with WordPress.com. So maybe in a real world example, somebody goes to look at your website, looks at the glossary and clicks on WordPress.org uh, or gets to that page or something like that. You would want to define what that is and then potentially you would want to say like, hey, like right underneath the definition, you want to say, hey, um, user, person on the website, just so you know, because we've already thought about this, because we we know all this stuff, uh, we know that most people confuse WordPress.org with WordPress.com. So here is a link to that other thing in this case, WordPress.com. They click on WordPress.com and they can go to the WordPress.com page and see 
like what the difference is. And they could literally like have two screens open, they can compare and it like an easy little relation of things that are either related for, you know, they're just related or they're often confused with or whatever. That's the concept, you know, the real world concept that we're talking about here. And you could just do something like this where you relate those two things and they don't have to be the same. Uh, in this case they are, but they could, like I said, be like a glossary entry to a video or a glossary entry to a blog post or something like that. And there's many different ways to do this. This is just the way that I have this set up here. Again, this is slightly outside the scope, but it is it is a part of this glossary thing. I mainly want to show you how I displayed all this stuff on the front end, but I don't want to um, sacrifice you guys of this back part of the like the setup part because it is important. So um, that is kind of the idea there. Glossary, glossary, many to many because many items of of many words could potentially in terms or whatever could have many other um, things that are related to them and vice versa. This isn't super, like I said, critical to this. So if you have more questions on this, let me know and I will make more dedicated videos. I'm trying to make more specific videos on topics because I think that's more digestible sometimes. This is just a bigger project here. So uh, appreciate you sticking with me. So let's keep going. We have a relation. We have, uh, you know, potentially like a, a new field or a new um, entry in here that we've talked about. There's one very critical piece and this is where I want to kind of take a step back for a second and talk to you about the pitfall that you might run into specifically with something like this. The problem is if we go back to what we're trying to do here, the first thing that came into my head is I I know that the alphabet, okay, like the English alphabet, so to speak, is, is finite. There is 26 letters and then there's like a number field that maybe you could potentially, like a special character field if you ever have a term that starts with like a, a number, right? So I was like, okay, I wanna make this as dynamic as possible. So I thought, well, maybe there's a way where I can just have all of these entries in the glossary and just dynamically create sections and the headings will dynamically be, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Like I'm sure there is a function that I could like parse through the alphabet or something and create those things. I looked into that. You couldn't definitely do that. That's not the solution that I went with. And I went with that solution. I didn't go with that solution because of a couple factors. One, because I felt like it was a little too annoying. It was like technical. It wasn't overly technical, but it's unnecessary for what I'm trying to do. There's no real reason to do that. And because it is finite, there was just ended up better, being better ways. The second reason is actually more important. I slept on that decision and I was thinking, you know, I'll come back to it. And then I came back to it and I was thinking, you know what, what if uh, one day, this 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 glossary as an example, or anything, would grow to a huge size. And I wouldn't want it to just be like one page. I would want, I would want to simply and easily create a page that was like glossary slash B or like, um, you know, glossary sections slash B or something like, 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 you know, like B, A, B, C. Like if I, if, if what if somebody wanted to look at all of the terms, like the, let's say there's like, you know, a hundred thousand terms hypothetically in this thing, okay? And at one, at some point, somebody wants to just look at the terms that start with A. A really easy way to do that, built into WordPress, is to just make each one of these its own category in a custom taxonomy. And that is ultimately what I ended up doing, and we enhanced it a little bit with AI, like I'll show you here. So, what I ended up doing was after I decided I'm not gonna programmatically create any of this or anything like that, all I did was I went back in, and I went to taxonomies. And again, in Jet Engine or in ACF, you can create custom taxonomies. It's very straightforward. I'll show you how to do it in Jet Engine here. Uh, for 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 the glossary situation, I created a new taxonomy. I called it glossary sections. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it like letters, uh, might make sense. Um, you know, glossary first characters. I don't know, it doesn't matter, but whatever you want. And then you give it a slug and boom, you're good to go. You, at you assign it, attach it, whatever you wanna say to a post type. In this case, we want, it, we want it to be glossary. And again, our glossary sections is the taxonomy that we're attaching to that. You can change the labels and different things like that. We talked about that already. And then advanced settings, um, pretty standard here. I don't think I changed really anything. The one thing I always do is change things to hierarchical just because it's a limitation of WordPress where yeah, the UI is just better, okay? If you click hierarchical when you're actually assigning these things. Okay, so now what we have, once we create that, is we have a custom taxonomy, glossary sections that is attached to our glossary and our entries and everything like that. So we have our post type, we have our taxonomy. Now, what you see is what we didn't talk about here when we were over on user before. Over on the right-hand side, we have a taxonomy. And if you're familiar with WordPress or really a lot of CMSs, this, this, you're not like, maybe this is like a new scenario, but this isn't like a, this isn't, uh, 
you know, different in any stretch of the imagination. If you're dealing with posts, you see the co the categories, it's over there. This is hopefully pretty familiar to you, the, co the, you know, the overall look and feel of what we're looking at here. Here's where I came into another potential pitfall that I didn't want to have happen because I'm always thinking about how to make these things as dynamic and as easy um, as possible uh, because I, don't, I want to do the least amount of work and have the most amount of benefit most of the time with these types of things. And I want to make the least amount of mistakes. Okay. That's really the important thing. I want to have the manage the least amount of stuff because we all have a lot of things to manage. I don't want to have to remember to do stuff that is extremely mundane if I can avoid it. So what is the problem here? Let's, let's do an example. Okay. We have an entry, right? We want to, we want to put an entry in here, right? And we want to say like, um, you know, some sort of web term. We'll just, we'll just say like, you know, www or something like that. Right now, what is going to happen when I publish this right here? When I publish this, like, let's say you're adding this, you're, you're, you've created this glossary and we've set it up the way we set it up with taxonomies and everything like that. And then you come in here and you need to add the, the, the term www. Okay. So you come in here, you do www, you put in like maybe, you know, obviously there's, you could say World Wide Web and then www, whatever you want. And then definition. Okay, cool. And you fill out the data or somebody else fills out the data. Okay. Somebody else possibly fills out the data. Maybe your client and you click the publish publish button, what is gonna happen and what are you expecting to happen? You're you're expecting that to publish, okay? But what you're not, what you may forget because one, because it's off the side, you could, you could move it or whatever, but the point is like, I don't want, this is, like I have to put the title, I have to put the actual, um, the, the title of the, the entry in there, I have to put the acronym, I have to put the definition. Those are things that you're like kind of expecting to do or maybe you'd import or whatever. The glossary sections, right, for like actually making this happen, I don't wanna have to, because I know I can make this easier, I don't wanna have to come over here and manually hit the W button because this starts with a W, or if it was something else. I don't wanna have to manually set the first thing because that's like, I, I'm just gonna feel silly if I have to come over here every time and do that. So what I decided to do was I decided, I don't know how to do that, so I'm gonna go over to Claude, and I'm gonna ask Claude, hey, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to automatically set a, literally, I mean, like we could just look, we could just look at my, um, my, my history here. So this is, again, we need it. This is a step back moment. We need to understand exactly the, the frame of mind that you need to be in when you go into something like this. We have an issue. We need to be able to accurately describe the issue and in in some of our requirements. And then we need to be able to guide an AI assistant into getting, in this case, a relatively straightforward solution, but something that we might not know how to do right, right away on our own. So I'm just going to walk you through exactly what I did. Again, our goal, you know, if you and I were talking, our goal is to just, when I create a new entry, I don't want to have to click this. I just want it to automatically look at this first character and then boom, like assign the thing, okay? And what I'll do right now is because I'll show you everything, but I'll just show you that this works because it wouldn't work if you didn't have this going on. It's www, you press publish, and then over here it automatically did that. I did not click the W, okay? I'll also show you one other thing. If you change this to any other word, like, you know, like maybe instead of, instead of uh, you know, you come back later and you're like, I need to change this to a different variation of that word or something and da 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 whatever, it even does that too. It automatically, every single time you update or publish, it automatically changes the taxonomy, the, the, ca the category that it's in, to the first letter of the word, okay? So I'm, I spoiled it a little for you because it works, okay? But I wanna show you, but you're not gonna have that. That's not gonna happen by, by, by default. So I wanna show you kind of the way in which you can leverage AI to do some of these types of things, and I'll give you the code. The code will be uh, down below if you wanna use any of this or whatever, okay? So. I'm using, I go into, I go into uh, Claude, which is, um, there's a lot of freeness to Claude, but also I'm on the, the pro plan, which is like $20 a month. Um, so again, I'll leave a link if you want to go check this out or whatever, but just so you know there. Okay. So I'm using WordPress and Bricks Builder uh, and Jet Engine. I have a custom post type called glossary. I need to query the posts in that CPT. I'll zoom in a little bit for you here. I need to query the posts in that CPT. I want to query them in a specific way though. It's essentially a dictionary. I want to query them each post based on the first letter of the first word. How do I do that? I'm, I know we're going into the weeds here, but I want to try to teach you guys. Like you have to just talk to these assistants like you'd be talking to a regular person. Like that somebody that knows more than you, but doesn't know what you want to do. And that's exactly, that's ex this is how you get incredible results from 
doesn't matter how simple or how complex the thing is. You can do a lot with this. And I just want to try to hammer that home for you guys with this example. So then it's telling you all sorts of things about bricks and everything like that, saying go to Jet Engine, da da da, add these new things. You need to also be kind of like understand a little bit and you might have to tinker a little bit because certain things that it tells you to do, you might not have to do. Um, but the the bigger the bigger actual uh, you know like snippets of code and things like that that they are that that, that are actually functionally doing the things that you want you need to have a little bit of a sense of that but again just continue to learn on it so anyway so the first query here right I decided like so that was kind of like the first thing that I that I tried right we were talking about that earlier and then the next thing that I was like I decided to do this a different way I have a taxonomy because I looked into that and I was like that's that's not gonna work right so then I came back right at this situation we're in now and I said I decided to do it a different way I have a taxonomy called glossary sections that has um, for every letter and that has every letter in the alphabet in it write me a function that as soon as possible uh, that as soon as I publish a new post it will automatically look at the first letter and then give the appropriate category right and then it comes back with this and the cool thing about uh, Claude specifically this has these this like artifacts thing over here where it generates this code right here on the side you can see you can download it really easily you can copy it and everything like that and it's gonna give you something like this now if you're not familiar with any of this it's gonna be kind of tough at first and I don't really have a solution for that because you need to have some level of like you don't have to have code competency I couldn't I couldn't have just spun this up and writ that wrote this myself but you can ask Claude to say like hey can you explain this like line by line it really depends on how much you want to kind of you know go into this and tinker with it yourself but the point is that these tools are enabling us to like do a lot more than we could you know we just need to think a little bit so um so it gives me something like this I'm like perfect cool so then then I thought at this point, just walking you through the line of thinking, add another condition. If the first letter is not alphabetic, then do a category, move it into a category called like hashtag or pound sign or whatever. And I was like, okay, because there is going to be situ there might be situations like that, and I have a, a uh, you know a category specifically for that. So let's do that. So then it updated that code and it just added that condition right in there. Right, perfect, awesome. So um, then I said, then I said it didn't auto assign. And then this is the funny part because this is the issue. This issue is actually a me problem. And this is where I, under, where like you're guiding this thing. It knows more than you about like programming and stuff like that, but it's guiding you. So what I needed to do next was, and now it's going to tell me to do some debugging stuff, which is also really good. And like we will kind of like skip over that because like it, it'll, it'll put in debug statements and then you can see it on the logs and everything like that. But Here's where I want to make an important point. This was my fault. I didn't explain to it, and I actually think I lied to it at some point, where the problem here is that our glossary sections right here is it had it, the, the taxonomy slug actually has a dash instead of an underscore. Like that, that was literally the problem. The reason this code wasn't working, the reason I said it didn't auto assign the code into the uh, when I wanted to do that. So long story short, I went back and forth with Claude a couple times and like I put the, the logs in there, I put the different functions in there and stuff like that. And this was a pain in the ass. So you have to like, again, double check, make sure you know what you're doing and stuff like that. But once it did, then it was like, you know, we got to the secondary point and we could continue on what I was doing. So that was my fault. Make sure you're testing, make sure you're making sure that, you know, you, you, all your data is right because it doesn't know exactly what's kind of like fully going on there. Um, you know, because it's outside this outside the scope of the WordPress environment. Okay, but the next thing though was that it was doing something weird where I said like it. I tested it and I did the debugging and everything like that, and it wasn't actually getting the first character for some reason. It was always an A that was a returning. So I literally just said in plain English that it wasn't doing that, and then it did some debugging. It did some detailed like character analysis thing, like you know, like changing different, uh, making sure that it was. I think ultimately what it did was it was looking and I think the first character might have been like a white space character or something like that. So it ended up it ended up figuring that out and working there and that was that was perfect and it worked. And then I I told myself I told it down here that it was the it was the right uh the right one. So that ended up working. And then um uh, and then we got down to here and again all this code I will give you the final code here. I just want to walk you through this. So um, so we have all that and then um, it did some sort of auto draft phase and there again you have to like understand what's going on and you have to test so it's not like it's no work it's just like it's a lot less like development straight up development work because again at this point there's so much development information out there we don't need to be necessarily doing all the 
the simple leg work. Like you can bypass a lot of it, but to, in order to get what you want, you still need to work with it a little bit. So the, but again, the, ultimately this is less than 30 minutes of work and I didn't know how to do most of the shit. So it's like, this is still a way big benefit. So, okay, anyway, at the end of the day here, we created this, I got it to, you know, do a perfect little snippet and everything like that, that uh, that worked exactly as I wanted. I tested and everything like that. All I did with that snippet, and you could do this a couple of different ways, but all I did with that snippet just for now is I went into, and be careful if you're gonna do this, big disclaimer, be careful if you're gonna do this, but if you're using like a Bricks Child theme, you go to Appearance, Theme File Editor, you come over here to Functions PHP, and then down here, you can do like uh, right here, you can do this function, at, you know, I just put a little comment in here and then I just dropped this code in here. So this code, like I said, will be in um, in the description or will be linked somewhere in here, you know, that you can that you can grab it. So go check, go check it out. But you're gonna have to change some stuff, right? Like if you don't call it glossary sections, right? Then you're gonna need to change that. I will say that's a really important point. Just as a random aside, whether you're doing this or anything else with docs and AI, the cool part is that you could throw this code into potentially Claude, right? And then you could say like, hey, I got this code. I think it's going to work for me, but my my um, you know my taxonomies, my term names, whatever the taxonomy names are not glossary sections. They're X Y Z whatever. And then it it's probably going to be smart enough to know to change like the post type. You know, it, it, a lot of times it'll create code and it will tell you, hey, make sure you change this, this, and this, so you're not like guessing at any of that. That's again the real power, the real enhancement of all that. But anyway, all I did here was I took that snippet and I put it into the uh, you know, the functions PHP thing here. So it's working. Okay. And then that's, that was our result there as far as, um, as what we get when you type in a new, uh, entry, it automatically tax taxonomizes it appropriately with the appropriate category. And all the category is, is just the, um, you know, the first letter here. So we'll go back to www. It switches. It's, it's beautiful. Okay. It's a very small thing, but I mean, just think about the amount of quality of light that is, and you could always expand that to do different things or whatever. So it's just, it's very nice. Okay, so now last part of all this is how did we actually get to this point though? Because like there's a couple different situations here now that are going on. We've 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 enhanced the way in which we are creating the actual like content, like managing the content so to speak, but we haven't talked at all about the front end. So let's wrap it up with that. So if we edit this with bricks, this is uh, again, this is a custom post type called glossary. So this is an archive, this is a glossary archive. Um, if you're not sure how to do that again, watch the dynamic data video, data video series. But basically this is just an archive template that is specifically, um, uh, condition, condition, like the template conditions are just the, the glossary one, which is like a custom templated glossary, uh, archive. So then how do we actually set up this loop situation? Okay. So if we come down and we, uh, open up some of these things here. And again, we're in bricks, but again, the concepts again are similar. So I, I feel like you could you could do this elsewhere. Is this is the section wrapper. Now it's a little confusing because it's not a section element. I'm just saying section as in this, maybe semantically not the best way. But the section, what I deem a section in what we're talking about here is like the A section, the B section, the C section, right? So so if you go to section and then you say, um, I created that section, and in that section we have a letter which is our, you know, our, our whatever. In this case, it's an actual, it's our term name because term name, we're, we're talking dynamic continent, right? So the letter of that section is, you wanna put in the term name. The term name is A, B, C, D, E, F in this case. It would, it's just the category name. So the term name is the dynamic piece of data that we wanna put in there. So that's just like a heading element that is dynamically bringing in the term name, okay? Uh, the next, the next bit inside of all this is the entry wrapper, and the reason we have to have an entry wrapper is because we're gonna, we're, this is a nested query. We're querying the entries within the actual letter or the section of that, right? So let's go back to the top because it makes more sense like that. The first thing that we're creating is think, of, think, of, think of a blank page. The first thing you need to query is you need to query all of your letters, all of your sections, the whole taxonomy of. The, the glossary sections that we created there. All you have to do there is you create that div with the letter, right? And then in that div, you're doing a query. And the query is simple. The query is a terms query, and it's the glossary sections. It's ascending, and you can do, really, there's only gonna be like 27, but you just you know turn it up to whatever, and that's it, okay? And, and then you could, you could customize it however you want. You can not show empty, show empty, whatever. It'd be probably nicer sometimes to, to not show the empty ones. But for the sake of this, I just turned that on so we can see every letter. 
And all you're going to get when you have that, if you just do this simple query and you set it up like that, is you're going to have every single letter queried on the page. And the letters again are the, the categories the ta in, that, in that glossary section taxonomy. Okay. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. That's going to be awesome. Then though, you have to actually get those entries within each letter appropriately. So then we create another block in there and we call an entry wrapper. And then within that, we have the actual entry. And all the entry is, is just text that's post title because each one of those, you know, block editor, container, custom blocks, those are just entries. And those entries are just literally custom post types. They're just custom posts, like custom posts in that glossary post type. And then if we go back up, how, how are we gonna get, this is the only like difficult part about this, the, the part that might trip you up, is how are we gonna get the entries, only the entries that are associated with our current letter that we're on? Because it, because we're kind of get a little it's a little inception now right like there's a there's kind of a, like we're a, a loop within a loop okay so how do we do that well it's 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 straightforward once you kind of understand it and look at it and play around with it here we have our div our uh, our block here we come come into our query what are we querying what are the things that we're querying here they're posts right they're glossary terms so they're they're posts right they're glossary entries there's a lot of, lot of semantics here but they're posts in the glossary post custom post type. We're going to order them by title, just because if you're looking at a dictionary, you'd want it to be in alphabetical order, ascending, right? Post per page, negative one, because we at, in this layout, we'd want all of the posts for A to show up potentially, okay? And then the only bit of like secret sauce here, so to speak, is if you come down here, it's not even secret sauce, it's built into bricks. You come down to taxonomy query, and you say taxonomy glossary sections because that is the term, like that's the taxonomy that that is being queried above all of this, like the external, um, you know, or the primary, you know, loop, so to speak, that we are nested within. And you say field term ID, and you say terms term underscore ID because now it's going to know which one it's in each time it's querying, and then you compare as long as it's in there. So. Again, some of that stuff is kind of hard, hard to explain just because it's a little abstract, but all you're doing, again, is you're querying all the letters and then within each letter that you've queried, like each little one of those um, one of those loops, you're just querying, querying again and that query is related to the, the primary query above it just as, as the nested one. So again, hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you're if some of this didn't make sense from the dynamic thing, please go watch that series. It is completely free. I I I am extremely proud of it. I know that there's a lot of really good content in there. This stuff just takes a cup a little bit of practice. You watch it, you learn it, you play around with it, you do like two, three projects with it maybe, or you just kind of just tinker with it and you get it gets a lot easier. So um yeah, that's all I can say about that. Like that this obviously what we're seeing here is a relatively straightforward example with a little bit of uh, tough pieces in there just to kind of wrap your head around if you're newer to it. But again, I would just say keep on going because um, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. We are just scratching the surface here. Um, you know, if this is something that you want to do. And again, I want to reiterate: um, if you need if you need to watch any of this, go back and I'll I'll leave timestamps. Obviously, as you might have seen in the description of everything that we talked about here, how to do everything. If you have any specific questions, leave them down in the in the comments. I will do more uh, content on this and re reply directly. But I want to just make the case one more one more time. If you're still sticking around here, is that these types of questions, these types of projects, it's not like you watch this video and you do this and then you can create a glossary. It's like now you have, it's more, it's way more compounding than that because you understand and you're picking up so much more skills, so many more skills on like how to do specific things. And then the next time you have a project that is like, you know, a standard devi deviation away from this, you can do it almost without looking anything up because you just know how to think. So that's all. That's the style of my content. Hopefully, guys, you appreciate it. Um, and again, if you have any questions specifically, let me know down below. But hopefully, you're um, you know leveraging the dynamic data opportunities of Bricks and WordPress in general, and then also the AI thing, which I'm going to make more content on that because it's super important. Um, I made a video recently, kind of talking about this project and a couple other ones in high level, and then I'll have subsequent videos on those other projects in detail. So I'll leave a link to that card as well if you want to go check that out. But Guys, listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Hopefully you got something out of it. If you did, leave a like, comment down below, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you.